Today's video is sponsored by Wallmine. It's this super cool platform that is just jam packed with information. You can get insights on stocks, track your portfolio and watch list. You can stay up to date with notifications and alerts. And the best part is that you can check it out for completely free. Link is down in the description below. Hey guys, and welcome back to another video on the channel. If it is your first time here, my name is Brandon. And also if you're new to the stock market, you can always click that first link down below if you do wanna learn more about our investing academy. But in today's video, in light of what we got going on, the situation at hand, I figured now's a perfect time to talk about some of the biggest mistakes that beginner investors will find themselves making during a stock market crash. And it's just crazy how commonly you'll see these mistakes being made kind of across the board. You'll see them time and time again. And hopefully by talking about them today, we'll be able to recognize them, kind of identify them before they happen or if they're currently happening, identify them and make the appropriate change or the appropriate, just try to avoid these mistakes because they're not good when it comes to a stock market crash. The first one is actually quite simple and it does happen all the time. It's not knowing exactly where your money's invested or not knowing what you're invested in. And this happens quite commonly, like I hear it all the time if you invest with the bank, for example, if you're invested in mutual funds or you work with an advisor and you know your money's invested, but you don't really know how it's invested. You may know you're in a balanced portfolio or it's invested conservatively, aggressively, high risk, yada, yada, yada. At the end of the day, you probably have no control over your portfolio and you probably couldn't name what funds you're invested in or how your investments are broken up. Other than that, it's invested at the bank. This even happens if you're somebody that's taking the do-it-yourself approach. If you're investing with something like Quest Trade, if you're investing with Wealth Simple Trade, even a do-it-yourself investor will look at their portfolio and they won't know what a particular fund does, or they don't really know what that ETF invests in, or even a stock for that matter. They own a stock, but they don't know what the company does, which is just crazy to think about. Especially in a time like this, we should have a very strong grasp of where our money's allocated, the types of companies, the balance in our portfolio. This is a must do. And if you are somebody that finds yourself in the camp where you don't know, take this as a perfect time to go and reach out to your advisor. Maybe shoot them a call or shoot them an email or give them a quick call. Just reach out and talk to them and ask, hey, how are my money invested? How are my funds invested? If you're doing it on yourself, really take the time to do some research on the ETFs you own. Take a look at your statements and just get a good grasp of how things are invested or how your money's deployed and invested, because especially in situations like these, it's very important to know how your portfolio is balanced, make sure that your investments are all spread out and you're investing according to how you should be investing during a time like this. And you can't know that, you can't know if you're balanced without knowing your portfolio and really understanding how your money's invested. Moving on to mistake number two, which is one of the more dangerous ones on this list. And again, it happens time and time again. And that's actually shifting your investments to be too conservative during a stock market crash. And it's so, so common that an investor will go through the first part of a crash and they'll lose 20, 30, 40% as their stock portfolio drops. And at the bottom, after the drop, they go, holy smokes, that was far too much volatility. That was way too crazy for me. I can't handle the stock market stuff. And they'll actually shift from equities into fixed income or they're shift into bonds or they'll worse off, they'll take their money and they'll actually just pull it out of the stock market into cash. This is actually one of the worst mistakes and it can cost you a ton of money by going too conservative. It's kind of twofold in the fact that if you do shift out of equities, first of all, you're locking in your losses, assuming that these companies are gonna recover and actually uh, make their way back up to where they were before, you're locking in your losses at the bottom. And when you do go too conservative, you're actually missing out on the very, very important recovery, which does follow these crappy times during a stock market crash. If you do participate in them, you'll participate a very, very minor, a very, very small amount relative to if you just stayed the course and just left your portfolio as is, you're essentially gonna have a rough ride down, but you'd also experience a pretty nice ride up by shifting into bonds, by shifting your asset allocation at a time when the markets are down you can end up costing yourselves a lot, a lot of money. Another point, if you are somebody that is doing monthly contributions or you know paycheck by paycheck or bi-weekly contributions to your portfolio, 
huge mistake is for people to actually cut back on those. I heard someone just the other day saying, I should probably decrease my uh, input. I should decrease my savings into my portfolio because the markets are so bad. We wanna be doing the opposite and actually increasing the contributions that we're making. This of course does assume that, you know, you're still making a pretty steady income and you haven't uh, really lost, like, if you're still making a pretty good income and you can still afford to be investing, you should absolutely keep it as is, if not ramp it up and definitely don't make any major changes in your portfolio to shift too conservatively. That's another mistake that people will commonly, commonly make. Mistake number three applies to anybody that maybe has some cash on the sidelines. Uh, maybe you're somebody that's actually just investing for the first time and you're waiting to bottom fish, you're waiting to hit that bottom on the market. We talk about this time and time again. Don't keep yourself out of the market and just be sitting on the sideline waiting for that perfect opportunity to get in. Because I know right now with the whole situation at hand, there could very well be a lot worse to come, but we don't know that for certain. And what we can say for sure is that the markets are down, let's call it 30% off highs, you could be getting a 30% better entry price than you did a month ago. Have we hit a bottom, have we not? We never ever know. So if you're somebody that is looking to get some money into the market, as we touched on just a couple videos ago, get in the market, get your feet wet, but portion off your investments. Get started because I know it sounds crazy, but it's not out of the possibility. It's not, it's possible that what if this was the bottom that we just saw? Now that's not what I'm expecting and that's not, if I had to put a guess on it, that's not what I would say. But how silly would you feel if you're waiting for the market to drop another 20% or another 30% and next thing you know, the market has climbed back up and you've missed out on a ton of gains. We never ever know. It's a fool's game to try and pick the bottom. So waiting out on the sidelines is just the third mistake that we talk about time and time again but we can't time the market, so just get in the market, but do it in a responsible way. Mistake number four is one that I really hope hits home with you guys, and this will hit a select few of viewers out there who are really passionate about this. Don't borrow money to invest. Don't leverage up to take advantage of these market deals. And I know that that kind of goes against what some of you have been taught, and you're probably thinking you're missing out on a huge opportunity, but for a beginner, stay within your means and don't go out and take on a huge financial burden. Don't go out and take on a huge debt if you're strapped for cash and you're worried about missing out on these deals. I came across a quote one time that I did wanna share with you guys today in regards to borrowing money to invest. Not only are you taking on a financial burden and a financial load, but you're also taking on the psychological load that comes with that. It's easy to see the bright side of things and it's easy to look, uh, before getting into it, look at the positives of multiplying your returns and making a whole bunch of money, but it's easy to kind of overlook the fact that if the markets don't turn your way or if they take longer than expected, you could very well lose sleep knowing that you have a 50K or 100K loan out to the bank that needs to be repaid. It's just something that beginners will constantly overlook. I've always tried to stay within my means, and I think, it's not to say that it can't be done, but for a beginner, I think it's a big mistake reaching for debt, uh, thinking that that's the first alternative when it comes to getting to, into this down market. Try to stay within your means and don't take on that financial and psychological burden if you don't have to. The fifth and final mistake for this video is one that really does hit home with me and it's paying too much attention to the financial media, to the Bloomberg articles, to the Yahoo Finance articles out there that at the end of the day are just there to provoke emotion, to scare you and to get views. It's crazy how many times I'll be forwarded a link or an article, like someone sharing an article saying, what are your thoughts on this? Like this is crazy stuff. And half the time, like more like 90% of the time, I won't even bother opening the link. I'll take a look at it and just kind of blow it off because I don't like to crowd my mind with all that noise that's out there. It's important to keep up with the actual facts, keep up with what's important, but when you do see projections out there, estimates and targets that really don't have any impact on things, they're just there to cloud up your memory, uh, cloud up your minds and just really spook you at the end of the day. It's crazy how much damage you can do by acting off that type of stuff, making rash decisions with your portfolios. 
really there's not a whole lot of good that comes with either watching the news, staying up to date with all the articles, really anything of that matter because at the end of the day, as we touch on all the time, those outlets, they're in the business of advertising, they're in the business of making money and their best interests are not you, the investor, it's their pockets, it's them making money. So my final mistake to you guys to avoid is to get too caught up in the news. Read it if you enjoy it, keep up to date, but don't let it impact your investment decisions. So those are just five mistakes that I believe beginner investors will constantly make and they're actually quite avoidable as long as you come in with it, as long as you come into it with this prior knowledge and you can identify things before they get too bad. I'll end this video with a question for you guys. What is a mistake that you feel beginners have made make what's a mistake that you have personally made or one that i just completely forgot to leave out in this video leave it down below so i can have a read and the others can learn from it if you did enjoy today's video feel free to drop a quick thumbs up because that is an awesome way of supporting the channel if you're new you can subscribe because we post videos like this every week on the stock market investing in canada and if you're a beginner if you're new in canada if you haven't even got started Maybe you're somebody that's investing in mutual funds and you want to do the do-it-yourself approach. Click the first link down below if you want to learn more about our investing academy. We're taking beginners through the entire process. It's super, super simple. That'll be that first link down below. But as always, I thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video.